The Cold Blast Express is making its way into the United States. We've already seen some cold air outbreaks, and we may see some more. But what is responsible for all of this? Well, it's the, the one and only polar vortex that you probably heard about a thousand times on the news station. They really love this word, the polar vortex. So on this episode of State of the Weather Address, I'm going to talk about what this polar vortex is. I'm also going to show you what it's going to do to our weather, what kind of temperatures are headed towards the United States. And I'm also going to show you this cool wind and uh, temperature map tool that you can use and you can use to uh, find the polar vortex. So let's get right into this episode of State of the Weather Address. The Climate Prediction Center has issued their uh, latest climate map and anything in the blue here and above all these blue colors indicate the probability of below average temperatures. So the darker the blue, the more likely uh, the temperatures are going to be below average. So up here, very likely that you're going to get below average temperatures near 90%. This is for December 14th through 18th. And so something is responsible for this. And obviously it's cold air outbreaks, it's winter, it's going to happen. But there's this thing called the polar vortex. And I'm going to tell you what that is here. All right, so we've made it to the Bob Ross section of this uh, this episode. Where I'm going to start drawing some stuff here. And uh, we got to first uh, define what a vortex is. Well, a vortex, in this case, we've got a low-pressure system. And a vortex is essentially air spinning around a center point, okay? And in this case, it's a low-pressure system. So you get air that spins around low-pressure systems. Low pressures actually suck air in because the pressure is lower there so and the pressure around it is higher so it flows towards the low pressure okay just like that but there are some other effects that make it spin around like that especially at faster wind speeds that's a another topic for another day but nonetheless you can think of that the word vortex as kind of a low pressure system like that so we've got part of the word figured out the other uh part of the word is polar and so this happens near the poles of the earth so you get these low pressure systems near the poles okay and there's a reason this happens all right i've hired my fancy graphic designer to draw this out here this is planet earth right here that green little circle and to the left is the sun now the sun actually uh has more direct rays that hit the equator this is the equator right here the rays of the sunlight the sun's rays hit the equator they hit it more direct than they do in the poles so here's the sun's rays hitting the poles up here it's less direct so if you're at the pole over here okay this is you walking around the uh, sun's uh, rays are going to be kind of like that it's going to kind of scrape uh, more horizontally like that okay but if they're at the equator they're going to be more like this or like directly down and the sun's going to be kind of overhead it's going to be right overhead and it's going to be shining it Shining all of its light right down to the equator, uh, towards the poles, it's kind of on the side, towards the horizon, right? And uh, that being said, there's a lot more energy, a lot more uh, warmth that happens towards the equator. And there's a lot less that happens towards the poles because uh, the sun's rays aren't quite as direct. And so this uh, creates cooler temperatures up in the poles, okay? So you get... Uh, cooler air up here and then warmer air down here now what happens is the cooler air wants to sag south the warmer air wants to uh, go north if you're in the northern hemisphere and so this kind of creates movement but uh, it also creates kind of a pressure gradient and air is going to want to kind of spin around the poles and that's the polar vortex now cold air has less pressure than warmer i have some uh, other videos on this but uh the general uh, premise is, is colder air has less pressure, so there's typically going to be a lower pressure up in the poles. And remember what we said about vortexes, around low pressure systems, they like to spin around these lows. So you're going to get a lot of that circulation up in the poles. As you're about to see here, I'm going to show you some demonstrations of this in our maps section. So based off what I said, can you find the volar polar vortex here? This is actually a map from windytv.com. Okay, so you can go there and check it out anytime. It's got beautiful graphics. You can view computer model data over this. It's really cool. So 
the polar vortex is actually kind of right in this area. Okay, do you see it where all that air is kind of flowing around the Earth? Uh, it's not perfect. It's not uniform, okay? It's not always going to be uniform. Sometimes these waves will break up. Like as you see here, you can see some circulation here. Those are called the lobes of the polar vortex. They'll break up. And when they break up, they can break off the polar jet stream, okay? And they can kind of sag southward into the United States. And that what, that's what brings uh, cold air outbreaks. So let's uh, fast forward it and see what happens here. Right now, that's uh, the current cold air outbreak. But you see another one start to move its way south. You see that? It's uh, right north of the Great Lakes right there. Okay. And so these things are going to kind of circulate. They're going to kind of break off. They kind of just move around like that. And it's going to bring cold air for much of the central and eastern United States. Okay. And the center of it's the coldest air. Uh, really the coldest air in the area okay that's where it's gonna be so if you get south of that you're still gonna get some cold air uh, but the coldest is in that center right there of the polar vortex and that's where the lowest pressure is right in the middle so the polar vortex is the most pronounced in the jet stream around 500 millibar uh, for this example this is uh, from pivotalweather.com and they have some very beautiful uh, model graphics this is the GFS computer model and we're gonna see this polar vortex move around over the next uh, several days but here it is right now this is responsible for the cold air outbreak in the central and eastern United States and you can see it kind of right here ish again this isn't like perfect but your polar vortex is going to usually be somewhere up here but this is a little lobe that's broken off okay in general air flows around the earth like this but you can get these little pieces that break off and that's what are responsible for our uh, cold air outbreaks so let's watch this as we go forward here and you can see it kind of moving around up in Canada see see it flowing around a little bit it's not perfect but you can kind of see it moving around and look at that one another one sagging south whoops another lobe that's sagging south into the United States around the 12th and the 14th of December that's what we used in that uh, example on that previous map that's gonna sag south and it's also gonna bring cold air usually you get cold air kind of in this area south of it and up into the middle of the, the core of that thing and especially to the uh, just to the left as well so you get some very cold air that comes south of it so what's going on there well you got some very cold air here low pressure that air is going to want to get sucked into that low pressure system so you get that spin so you get cold air spinning around that low uh, that upper level low and again there's uh, less sunlight hitting the poles so you get more of these things and more of that polar vortex uh, to uh, happen you know right around that pole polar region you get lower pressure so throughout the winter well the uh, the sun's angle changes there's less direct sunlight on the United States further south as well and so these things can kind of move southwards and you get lobes that break off as well so what it's looking like right now is around the 12th and the 14th of December, we could be dealing with maybe even a greater uh, polar outbreak and potentially as well towards the 20th of December. So what do the temperatures look like? If you like uh, cold temperatures, you're going to like this GFS map. Or actually, you're probably going to love it. This is a, as of right now, December 8th. Okay, let's go back there. we got some cold temperatures in the United States. That's a current uh cold air outbreak the polar vortex is somewhere near the great lakes and you're getting cold air near that vortex and just uh sometimes just to the uh, the west remember that vortex we were examining farther up in the atmosphere this is the surface so let's uh fast forward this and uh temperatures will warm up a little bit but that second lobe of that vortex moves south and look at that sharp temperature change you go from you know 40s 50s 60s for the southern u.s to 20s and 30s potentially and you got another surge of polar air moving south, okay? And then another vortex moves south. Look at that right there. That is, uh, that's just caking the entire U.S. with uh, below average temperatures pretty much. And there it is. And uh, this uh, little piece of energy right here actually shows uh, like 30 degrees below av or, uh, 30 degrees below zero. Even in this area, 40 degrees below zero. Now, I would not trust that. The GFS has a cold bias past 240 hours. This is like 288 hours out. It's, uh, for one, really far out 
to be looking at details like this. Now, general signals of a cold air outbreak, we can look at that. So I think, you know, there's been some consistency in showing a cold air outbreak around this time. But uh, like specific temperatures, this is pretty far out. But nonetheless, some very cold air for the northern U.S. The GFS has had a cold bias. So what happens when that, you know, when you get a bias like that is it'll show colder air than actually what happens a lot of the time. So this is probably overdone quite a bit. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, very cold air, maybe some uh, snowstorms to accompany it across the uh, central and eastern U.S. These snowstorms will be probably fast moving as we've got a very cold progressive pattern here. But nonetheless, you could get some accumulating snow to stack up for much of that area circled. So that being said, it is going to be very cold in December. Some very cold temperatures for much of uh, the central and northern parts of the United States. And that being said, if you want my temperature forecast for this entire winter, go ahead and click the link below. And I have a 80-page super winter forecast, and it's regional too as well. And I talk about the temperatures over the next three months, the snowfall, the precipitation, and more. And I talk about how I put it together. It's very simple, uh, but you'll get a lot out of it. So go ahead and click the link below, and then uh, just enter your email, and I'll send it right off to you and also send you some weekly updates uh, just like this and uh, some exclusive updates as well so go ahead and do that and after you're done go ahead and click subscribe if you want more of these forecasting breakdowns and forecasting tutorials and if you want to supercharge your forecasting skills uh, go ahead and click subscribe in the middle here of this video so uh, with that being said Go ahead and get your winter forecast, click subscribe. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you soon.